What if Naruto was Sun's heir? Death's Guardian Part 8. Reading. Sun's heir. Death's Guardian by Engineer Forever. Chapter 8 Apollo cleared his throat and began. Chapter XV. Artemis slapped Apollo, making him grin and correct himself. Chapter 15. Naruto's eyes snapped open and he quickly regained his bearings. He was still in the middle of his uncle Hephaestus' junkyard, so that meant he hadn't died. Yay. However, his body was burning up more than usual, so that meant he had his bracelet back and Q had managed to give him a new arm. Which was really creepy, Piper pointed out. There was a sudden sense of dread that made Naruto sweat. He knew what the feeling was, because he had felt it occasionally for the past few days and most of his past career. A girl, most likely Talia but also possibly Zoe or Phoebe, was pissed at him. Wait, there's a sixth sense for that? Percy asked in wonder. Apparently, Jason quipped, well it's about damn time, the daughter of Zeus growled as the blonde sighed and sat up with a groan. Her scowl deepening, she asked sarcastically, have a nice sleep. Oh, we all know how worried you were, Nico rolled his eyes with a dull tone. Talia glared at her cousin. If it makes you feel better, no, no, I didn't, retorted the older demigod as he rotated his new shoulder, gods that hurt. Note to self, don't do that again. Unless I don't have another choice. I should stick with the other version. While he got to his feet, Naruto failed to see Talia's fist ball up. Oh boy, Percy said with a grin. When he faced her with a carefree grin in an attempt to reassure her he was fine, he missed the look of sheer anger sent his way. This is not going to be pretty, Leo stated while grabbing a handful of popcorn, and yet, entertaining. It was when his eyes closed that he hammered the last nail and secured his fate. May he rest in peace, Nico said with a bowed head. Talia's fist made contact with his cheek and the sound of thunder boomed. Talia used thunder punch, Annabeth giggled out. Naruto found himself stumbling backwards and holding a hand to his now throbbing jaw. It's super effective, Percy finished in amusement. His reaction was immediate. Ow, fuck, what the hell, Talia? Naruto exclaimed as he held his possibly cracked mandible. That was for making me us leave you behind, again. Talia spat at him. Nice cover. Hardly noticed it, Hermes whispered loudly, getting snickers all around. She crossed her arms and glared at him. The others in the group decided to watch safely from a close distance while Naruto recovered from the blow. Smart call, Jason remarked wittingly. Ow. Okay. Guess I sort of deserved it. Naruto mumbled, wincing with each word he spoke, couldn't you have punched me somewhere else, though? He should not have asked that, Ares said as he shook his head. I could have, but I didn't want to, Talia retorted with a glare, you'd better start talking, whiskers. Who are you exactly? Who is the man, behind the mask? Apollo said in a mysterious tone. Naruto groaned as he massaged his jaw. He opened his mouth to speak again when the same deep voice suddenly echoed around them with laughter, BWA ha ha ha. Wait until I tell Kashina. You've gotten yourself a spitfire, Kit. Ah, the elephant, or rather demonic bracelet, in the room, said Apollo as he rubbed his chin. Oh shut up, you stupid fox. Naruto retorted with a scowl as he glared at the golden bracelet on his right arm, you're partially to blame for this. Why do you insist on taking a limb from me when I need that? You fear dismemberment, Kit. What better way to charge you for calling on my power than taking your arm? The voice inquired. Wow, what a nice bracelet, Piper said dryly. Well, it clearly wouldn't be demonic if it was all rainbows and unicorns, sweetie, Aphrodite explained to her daughter. Did his bracelet just talk? Percy asked with wide eyes. That must be the idiot water boy you told me about, the voice said in amusement, let me get a look at him. Every snickered at Percy who had a brooding look on his face. Great, even the trinket was mocking him, what next? TCH, fine. You're helping me explain though, seeing as it's partially your fault, Naruto said. There was no response before Naruto suddenly gripped his right wrist. Dust started to swirl around him as his chakra spiked. The other quest goers shielded their eyes as a bright red flash encased the blonde. When the light died down, a crimson furred humanoid with a porcelain mask appeared, hanging off Naruto's shoulders by an arm. 
It was a torso only, male from the build, with everything at the waist down being smoke, but it had two large rabbit-like ears helped make it obvious that the humanoid wasn't human. All over its body were the golden markings that could be found on the Arcadia shield. The mask was shaped like a fox, the mouth curved upwards in a sly smile. On the forehead was the symbol of Olympus in glowing red. The mosque's two open eyes revealed pitch black sclera with red irises and slitted pupils. The hell is that? Ares wondered and also inwardly asked where he could get one, it looked cool. Hello fleshbags. The being greeted with joy. Naruto's fist flew up and struck the mosque's canine-like snout. The masked being let out a pained cry and its hands rubbed the snout in an effort to ebb the pain. Leo snickered. Pita is going to be on his ass for sure. Bad fox. No belittling other humans. Guys, I'd like you to meet my spirit companion, Q. Q. These are my companions, Naruto introduced. Q floated away from Naruto's shoulders and began circling around Talia. Hera smirked and asked, critiquing her already, huh? Talia scowled at her words. Hum, not too tall, nor too short. A normal hair color and forehead size. Good, and a demigod at that, QB said as he circled her before stopping in front of Talia and locking eyes with her, but she has the eyes, dot the eyes of someone with a lust for power. That's Talia for you, Percy smirked, and ducked under a deadly boot heel aimed for his chin. Shut it, kelp brain, back off, the girl snapped with a scowl, she was really uncomfortable with how he was circling her. It was like the red eyes could see right through her and found every dirty little secret she had locked away. Nico made a ghost noise to intensify the effect. Stop that, Talia hissed at the boy, getting a snicker in return. Q chuckled as he floated back, balanced by a short temper, definitely the daughter of the lightning god. Add in her still growing bust size and I'm positive I can tell Kashina you found a possibly worthy mate. Everyone broke out into laughter. Even Artemis snickered, as Talia groaned. Well, I'm glad someone else is helping out with those two, Aphrodite mused happily. M mate, Talia's face started to lose color. Naruto was pinching the bridge of his nose in frustration. Makes me wonder though, will you choose her or the girl with the big hips? QB asked his former container. Reina, Piper simmered with pursed lips. Talia immediately locked another glare on the blonde who looked like he wanted his employer to open the ground beneath him and swallow him whole. Sorry, not here right now. Leave a message, Hades said with amusement written on his face. Q, Naruto exclaimed with a red face, now is not the time to talk about my personal life. Don't you mean sex life? Teased the spirit with an audible smirk. Naruto just blushed and looked away, trying not to make eye contact with the very curious, angry Talia while the fox floated over to the satyr. S sex life, Talia sputtered. Hey, doesn't he know Talia doesn't like to share? Teasingly asked Annabeth as she gave a mock frown. Annie, a disciple of my employer, Hugh mused with a scrutinizing gaze, you must be Grover Underwood. E employer, Grover asked before his eyes widened, wait, do, do you mean Pan? Indeed I do, Hugh nodded, after my hosts, death. I volunteered to be his shield as I was in his first life. I did this partially due to a curse laid upon me and partially due to the things that happened to the kit. You're the Arcadia shield, Grover questioned. Hugh's human-like hand gave a, sorta, gesture. In a way, the spirit said, because of what the kit achieved before he died, Lord Pan took a claim to him like the Lord of the Dead and the kit's bastard of a father did. Hey, Apollo growled at being mocked by some spirit. So, that makes Naruto like Pan's champion, right? Hazel asked. Seems that way, Leo answered munching on some popcorn. Sunlight pierced through the clouds and Q yelped as he shielded his eyes. Ha, huh. serves you right Fox, the sun god cheered. Naruto rolled his eyes before looking at the sky, he's not wrong, dickhead. Quiet you, the pouting Apollo said to his son. The clouds slowly covered the sunlight back up. But the warning was given and Q murmured to himself in anger about stupid blonde men and their damned toads. Let's get a move on, Q, Naruto said with impatience, we have to get back on track. Yes, yes to save your gorgeous aunt, I know, I know, Q replied tiredly. 
Hermes snickered before looking to the goddess in question with a grin, seems you still have that effect on animal spirits, Artemis. Artemis huffed, not even going as far as to dignify an answer for that remark. As he floated back over to Naruto before Grover could ask him anything else. The red humanoid hovered next to the blonde with his arms crossed. From there he observed the other quest goers, first the hunters, who looked ready to kill him for the way he talked about their lady. As they should, Artemis murmured with a frown. He admitted they were attractive, but he knew the kid thought of them as family. Stubborn brat wouldn't change that label if he tried to make him. Order knows we don't, Artemis stated with a deadpan. Then the spirit looked at Percy, piercing red eyes looking over the youngest demigod present before Q spoke in awe, wow, he really is like an old you, Kit. Hey, think he runs around screaming about being Hokage or whatever the head of his city is. Percy grit his teeth in annoyance, why was he being compared with this Naruto guy so much? Let's just get this over with, Naruto groaned as he rubbed his temples with his fingers, dreading the upcoming conversation. He sat down on a not too broken chair and gestured for the others to find a seat. Once everyone, save a stubborn Talia who wanted to be ready to throttle the blonde teen from a standing position. How prepared you are, Talia, said Annabeth as she rolled her eyes. Oh please, you know you would do the same for Wethead, the hunter snarked back. Ah, touche, had gotten comfortable, Naruto started to speak, forty-something years ago, Rai Gigi. Zeus, whatever you prefer, was sick of my father's immaturity. Here, here, Zeus said with a nod. A couple of thousand years too late, if you ask me, but that's my opinion. Artemis tried to stifle her giggles. My father was sent to the hidden lands, or the elemental nations as natives like myself call it, forcibly crammed in a mortal infant form with his memories as a god locked away until he either died or had a child. Apollo turned to his father in shock and asked, who the heck drove the sun at the time? Zeus shrugged, probably had some spirit deal with it. The elemental nations are an old land untouched by most modern technology and the natives, myself included, developed very differently. Rather than focusing on technological advancement, the natives focused on advancing the abilities of the body. Soon enough, one man found a way to become a living weapon. Liking this guy already, Ares said as he smiled toothily. Whether he was a demigod or not, I'm not sure, but this man, the sage of six paths, found a way to harness what the people call chakra. In example, Naruto held his hand out in a small Rasengan formed, getting wide eyes from the observers as he continued, this, this is my chakra solidified. We can use chakra in many ways, but primarily we used them to fight against other countries. Ares licked his lips in glee at the thought of some hidden place in the world having wars. My father invented this jutsu, a chakra technique that could be used for battle, the Rasengan. For a long time, this was all I had of him and I didn't know it until seven years ago. He didn't even know your mortal guys. Athena wondered with a raised eyebrow. You had me, too, Kit, Q comforted the blonde with a pat on the head. Naruto released the technique with a sigh, which we will get to later. After the sage had started to teach people how to use chakra and passed on, the people started to fight. Because like any mortal, it is never enough, the wine god snarked mockingly with a sneer. You know, because gods forbid humans have a peaceful community. I'd be out of a job then, Ares pointed out. Aphrodite rolled her eyes, yes, because that would be bad. Oh come on, babe. Anyway, Countries were developing and the chakra users were staking claims on the lands. The chakra users eventually came to be known as shinobi clans. Soon enough, the countries had been claimed and five great nations took up most of the hidden lands. They were the land of fire, land of water, land of wind, land of lightning, and the land of earth. Now, I wasn't the best student growing up so this is my crappy summary of how shinobi villages came to be. The first village to be formed was my village. Basically power bases to hone their skills after long in fights between the clans, Athena surmised in thought. Naruto gestured to the symbol on his belt buckle, the village hidden in the tree leaves, Kanahagakur no Sato, is the primary shinobi village of the Land of Fire. The union of two great shinobi clans, the Senju clan and the Uchiha clan, 
formed it and it grew quickly along with the other alliances that the clans had made. Now the new village needed structure and a leader. It came down to two men, the leaders of the original clans that started the village, Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha. Ah, Apollo rubbed his chin in thought, the guy that Creeper is pretending to be. The plot thickens. As Naruto spat the second name out in disgust, Q snarled angrily, his mask cracking slightly before it quickly healed over. It got raised brows from the listeners, but they weren't about to interrupt the story. Naruto sighed and pinched his brows in an effort to calm down. Hashirama was elected leader, a position the people called Hokage, Naruto explained once he regained his composure, his hand returning to his side, it was the highest rank one could achieve in the structure of shinobi military. There were three primary ranks aside from the position of Hokage, Genin, Chunin, and Jonin. Genin were the grunts, the cannon fodder and the most useless compared to the other ranks. Chunin were advanced commanders and did most of the security for the village last I recalled. Jonin were the best of the best and in most cases they trained the Jenin in teams of three. In fact, most Jonin were required to serve in the special operatives group that Shinobi called Anbu for a set amount of time. Anbu specialized in just about everything, from assassinations to espionage. So basically their army structure and I guess these Anbu would be the CIA. Annabeth asked with a scrunched nose. Seems that way, Jason said as he listened in rabid interest. The blonde on the screen was kinda like him, trained at a young age. Made it much more interesting to relate to the son of the sun god. Percy's eyes widened as it all clicked together and he asked, Wait, are you saying you were a soldier? Amazing, Percy was the first to get it, Annabeth said in shock. Maybe my anger didn't let me think of it first said a peeved to Leah, as though she were insulted that Percy got it first. Percy just puffed out his chest with pride. The others felt their eyes mimic the raven-haired demigod and looked at the blonde expectantly with equal amounts of shock. Naruto merely nodded. Like my mother and father before me, the blonde said proudly with a grin, dear old dad even managed to become Hokage. That's years later, though, back to the story at hand. Madara didn't take to not making Hokage well and he defected. He and Hashirama fought at a place later called the Valley of the End. Madara was no match and even his ace in the hole fell against the might of the Shodai, or the first, Hokage and since then none have managed to reach the same height that Hashirama Senju had in our village. I wanna see what this Hashirama was like now. The Madara guy, too, Ares grinned dangerously. Athena groaned, oh, go cool your head. They are long dead by now. Plus this is another dimension. Ares deflated at that. Dad came close though, but again, that comes later. Whoa, Grover said in awe. Fast forward a good century or so, Naruto continued, the second shinobi war had just come to a close. Kanahagakur survived once more, but their allies Uzuoshigakur no Sato had been obliterated. The village starts with Uzu, that's the first part of your name, right? Percy asked once more, Naruto arched a brow, you're catching on, soggy boy, the blonde replied with a grin as the younger boy pouted at the nickname. Strike 2, Nico cried out in a panic, smart Percy on the port bow. We might have to see if we can swap them if the other one really is smarter, Talia pointed out. Hey, indignantly cried out the son of Poseidon. He's right, not cool guys, Annabeth said scolding them before rhetorically asking. Do you know how hard it would be to train Percy, again? Yeah, hey, Percy gave his giggling girlfriend a look of betrayal. Naruto continued, yes, my clan, the Uzumaki, were the primary natives of Uzuoshigakur no Sato. According to my parents, my mother was thought to be the sole survivor of the clan due to her previous extraction to the much more fortified Konoha because of her status as clan heiress. Which makes you, a prince. Talia concluded with a gaping stare, wow, you know how to go big honey, Aphrodite winked at Talia, getting the girl to blush a bit. Apollo boasted with a grin, oh yeah, I had a princess. You just can't get them anymore nowadays. Obi silent, Artemis scowled at his bragging. Naruto rolled his eyes, I would be considered royalty if I wasn't busy being the last surviving Uzumaki. Oh, sorry, Talia said softly. Naruto shook his head. Still, 
He has a lot of repopulating to do. Aphrodite sang out with a big grin. I do hope other Talia can go that long if he is anything like Apollo. Aphrodite, Artemis said with a scowl, honestly, must you be so shameless? Yes, the love goddess answered nonchalantly, making the goddess of the hunt and her husband shake their heads. Talia was having a minor meltdown in her brain at the very notion. It's okay, not many remember the Uzumaki anyway. My mother told me they were so powerful it took two of the five great villages to defeat them. The name was buried and hidden out of fear. Know how to pick them indeed, Sunspot. Those are some good genes going into the pool, Ares commented with a nod, liking the kid's family representative already. It took two of the main five nations to best a small one. I wonder what the causalities for the big nations were, Athena wondered aloud. The rich is lost, but again, we're getting off track. After the second war according to my dad, one of the war heroes and one of the strongest shinobi in Konoha was on Rakan when he found a boy around the age of five. Naruto continued before he looked up at the sun, blonde hair bright as the sun and eyes as blue as the sky. He was kind of girly looking, that's how my mother described him when they first saw each other. The gods laughed at Apollo openly, even Artemis. I must meet this woman, she called you out to A.T., the maiden goddess grinned to her brother. I am not girly. Apollo pouted with crossed arms while slouching in his chair. Naruto paused and waited for the snickering group to calm down before he resumed, the first day they met was in Kanaha's Shinobi Academy. The academy is optional, but it's where most kids ages 5 and up start their careers as a shinobi. During the last year of their studies, my mother was kidnapped by a rival village, Kumogakur no Sato. Apollo seemed to have gained a frown at this. No one was aware of her status as a missing person, except my father. My dad, as a student, was the best. Straight A's, the honor student that everyone looked up to. Everyone looked at Apollo, who had a shit-eating grin on his face, with absolute disbelief. He chuckled when everyone gained looks of disbelief, I know, hard to believe it with how he acts now, but it's true. Anyway, he was the first to notice my mother missing. Maybe it was because how similar she was to Andy Arte. Well that explains why I like her. Artemis smirked and turned to her brother. Is there something you would like to tell me? Shut it, Arte. Or maybe it was something else entirely. I don't know. Being who he was, or rather as, dad went after her. My mom managed to use her long red hair as a trail, pulling out strands to leave like breadcrumbs. The Kumo Nin were either too stupid to realize it or they thought it was from something else. Dad followed the trail and incapacitated the wannabe kidnappers with a guerrilla attack. Naruto chuckled, needless to say after that, mom discovered she had a hero complex. Hermes wolf whistled and Aphrodite was giddy at the dramatic meeting of love. There was another shared chuckle amongst the group at his words. So the years went by and unfortunately another war started, Naruto said with a sigh, it was in the third shinobi war that my father made a name for himself. Konoha no Kiroi Senku or in English, Konoha's Yellow Flash. The name was derived of his signature and most deadly technique, with it he killed a whole platoon of Iwagakur shinobi. He was instantly deemed a triple S rank threat with a retreat on site order from the enemy's higher ups. We are talking about Apollo, right? Ares asked. You're just jealous, said God of the Sun retorted. What technique was this that Apollo created? Phoebe asked before grinning something lecherous. It could have been made for that, Artemis mused playfully. Hey, I can make something serious if I want to, Apollo argued. Sure you can dear brother, sure. Naruto didn't answer, he merely smiled before vanishing in a yellow flash. Phoebe gasped as cold steel pressed against her throat, forcing her head to tilt back to look at the sky. Naruto leaned forward, well aware the others were watching him, and whispered, Imagine only seeing a bright yellow flash before you drew your last breath, feeling the cold steel of a blade against your throat and severing it. Damn, Apollo is scary if he actually applies himself, Ares mused. Indeed, Athena said with pursed lips, like she was upset that she hadn't thought of something like that or something. Th then that, teleporting you do, Percy asked hesitantly. It's called the Horatian no Jutsu which translates to the flying thunder god technique. I guess somewhere in his amnesiac mind, dad remembered Rai Gigi, 
Naruto answered as he put his kanai away and walked back to his seat. Turning around he sat down and looked at the group, it's mostly because of the Horaishin that dad became the Yandaimi Hokage, with the secondary reason being his cunning mind that he hides because he's so damn lazy. Naruto took that moment to glare at the sky before looking back at the audience. And that is why Apollo doesn't apply himself, Artemis groaned. Apollo shrugged, what, I have better things to do. Like what, sit in your car and listen to the radio. Hermes teased. Holy crap, Grover breathed as his eyes widened in realization, so you're saying Apollo, one of the most irresponsible of the gods, was the leader of your village. Apollo frowned and snapped his fingers, Grover Underwood just got the flu. Yes, and Konoha was more prosperous than ever, Naruto returned with a faraway look in his eye, for a few years, all was dandy. Then, mom got pregnant with me. Taking a shuddering breath, Naruto continued, shit hit the fan 22 years ago on my birthday, October 10th. A madman using the surname Uchiha attacked the village while my father was helping my mother give birth to me. And here I assumed I was the twin of childbirth. Artemis asked amused to her bother. I can do it just as well, the god of the arts waved off. The two of them didn't want to be exposed to a possible threat during the birth, so they chose a secluded spot that was leaked out somehow. After my birth the madman attacked them, holding me hostage, and forcing my mother to release a beast into his control. This is where I come in, Q spoke up after being silent for so long, making the others jump at his voice. The spirit coughed into his fist and continued, allow me to fully introduce myself. I am the Kyubi no Kitsune, the bane of Kanahagakur no Sato. I was the beast being controlled by that Uchiha. Anger issues, much, Leo asked. The mask cracked once again, though this time it revealed a bit more to the shaken audience. A snarling appearance of a beast had appeared before Naruto smacked the spirit in the side. Shaking his head and once more donning the mask, Q or rather, Kyubi resumed his story, anyway, that man sent me after the kid's parents. Even his mother, who was still weak from childbirth mind you, held me off long enough for his father to do something stupid. Using the art of fuinjutsu, or sealing if that helps, the disguised god sacrificed what remained of his mortal flesh and soul to put my spirit and power into his son. You sealed a demonic beast into your son? Hermes asked with shock. That was the other me. Apollo insisted. The other gods gave him disapproving looks. Talk about a nasty surprise. Leo added, receiving nods of agreement from the other demigods. I thought I had it rough as a tree, Talia mumbled. I became what the natives of the Hidden Lands call a Jinchuriki, Naruto said softly as he shifted the attention once again, it translates to the power of human sacrifice. Why would they call you a sacrifice? Zoe asked with a frown. These people were sounding more and more like a serious threat than she would like. We're on the same page, Zoe. Talia murmured with a frown. Why were my kind called that? Naruto asked himself as he looked up. After he thought for a few seconds, Naruto came up with an adequate reply, we were the equivalent to nuclear missiles. Ares whistled in awe, you turned your kid into a weapon, a legit weapon. Balls. Oh shut it warhead, Apollo hissed angrily. The group gaped at him as Naruto went in depth about what a Jinchuriki was, explaining what they could do with the power of their tenant. Villages could be leveled, terrains could be reshaped, and one could even manipulate the area around them as a secondary form of defense. Interesting, Athena mused. Sure it was a detestable thing to do to a child, but nonetheless it was an impressive outcome. The blonde described the Jinchuriki cloak and the process most go through, describing his friend Gara with a fond smile. He also explained that because of all that power, he and others were forced to be seen as something less than human. Wonder how the demi-life made him feel, Hades added, getting a dirty look from his nephew. The lord of the underworld shrugged, someone had to say it. Naruto went on to explain that most Jinchuriki couldn't handle the tainted chakra of their tailed beast, and consequently the Jinchuriki died much sooner than anticipated, or they succumbed to the stigma of being a Jinchuriki and ended it themselves. This of course prompted Zoe to ask, then, what is your status? Naruto blinked. Confused, before understanding crossed his eyes and he replied, Technically, if I hadn't been ripped apart and never used Kyubi's chakra again, I would live until age 74, 
which is still pretty long for Jinchuriki. But if you did, Percy inquired, use Kyuubi's uh, chalk raw, I mean. How long would you have lived? There was a long pause before Naruto sighed, if I did use Kyuubi's chakra, a year for each, tail, I sprouted would have been shaved off my life. My body would have given out and I would have died. Talia did not like that, how people could do such a thing. Put a monster inside of a baby. What about when you rebuilt your arm? Phoebe asked. Naruto rubbed the new appendage while Grover and Percy stared at it. The two still couldn't wrap their heads around being able to regenerate an entire limb, having not seen it themselves. Because QB healed me, I took off approximately one year of my lifespan, Naruto said warily before grinning, that's if I don't die on this quest or any others. Talia narrowed her eyes at him, which he noticed. Naruto glanced at Talia and subtly mouthed, later, to which she grit her teeth but nodded. Later, 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 it's always later with him, Talia said in an unsatisfied tone. I sense some trust issues building, Piper teased. No one asked you, grumbled the hunter. So, dot how was life until you came to the United States? Percy asked. The group's attention went to him as he spoke before going back to their storyteller. Naruto looked at the sky while QB faded away into nothing, seeing no point in being there as his purpose was finished. To talk about my life before coming here, I really don't want to, but I guess I should, relented the blonde demigod. Naruto then described his early life, as far as he could remember. For the first hour, he talked about his childhood. Dumpster diving for scraps when the orphanage ignored him at dinner, hating the way people ignored his existence. He described what most would call the worst way to live or die, alone. He had no one to confide in, no one be there for. Naruto, for a long time, had no one to love. What a horrible way to start a life, Hestia commented softly, getting nods of agreement from the other Olympians. In the back of their minds, the group could recall the prophecy for the quest and wondered if this was when Five would learn of true sorrow, because they would understand if it was. There's that part of the prophecy, Apollo said in a dull tone that reflected his mood, even his body was a bit duller in hue. Grover couldn't imagine life without his parents or the camp, Percy couldn't imagine a life without his mother in it. Talia realized that while she didn't like to speak about the woman that had given birth to her and her brother, at least then she had more than Naruto, both Phoebe and Zoe thought of many of the hunters they had taken in and of how different their own lives would have been without their matron to guide them. Thankfully his life took a turn for the better as soon as he started the third year of the academy. He described his friends, the Rookie Nine, and then discussed Team Seven. The group stared at him in shock when he told them about Kakashi who they briefly met, being his teacher. Talia's eye twitched when Naruto told them about Sakura Haruno, his first crush. Jealous of a crush, Talia. Annabeth smirked. Rachel Elizabeth Dare. Talia retorted without removing her eyes from the screen. Annabeth promptly shut her mouth and glowered. They could hear hints of sorrow when he glossed over the subject of a kid named Sasuke. In order to distract himself from the past, Naruto told them about his first rank mission, his first friend and the developer of his philosophy, the Hyoden Ice Release user Haku. The group snickered when Naruto admitted that he still wasn't sure if Haku was a boy or girl. Those traps are usually dangerous, Aphrodite nodded with understanding. The happy ending, if one could call the deaths of two Rouge shinobi just trying to make a living happy, of the tyrannical Gato and the completion of the bridge between Nami no Kuni and Hai no Kuni brought light smiles to everyone's faces. Well even before coming here he's already doing some hero work, Demeter pointed out. His story then went to the Chunin exams, where he and his team faced death many times in order to advance in their ranks. Such as against a legendary traitor whose skill was on par with that of their leader at the time, a snobbish team that had a stick up his ass, and against a psychotic murderer who had the same burden Naruto did. Naruto described his battle with Gara in great detail, how he arrived after his comrades had been incapacitated and had been forced to fight dirty. The exploding kanai in the ass seemed to get a few laughs from Grover and Percy, while Talia, Zoe and Phoebe's lips curled up in amused smirks. Mental note, C4 up someone's ass, Ares muttered to himself. 
He then described fighting against the giant 100-foot-tall one-tailed raccoon dog, or tanuki, made of sand. Naruto said that he had barely escaped death by summoning a massive warrior toad from a contract his father and old teacher had signed beforehand. A toad? I had a toad familiar. Apollo blanched, really, toads. When he came to the finale of that battle, waking the insomniac with a forehead-cracking headbutt to which Talia chimed in that he was too hard-headed for his own good and finishing it with a jaw-cracking punch before the two 13-year-olds plummeted to the ground. Now that earned some style points, Leo said with a smile. The blonde then said he still wasn't sure why Gara figured that he, Naruto, was his first friend because of it. Wait, he beats the crap out of this kid, and the kid then wants to be his friend. Wow, weird much, Nico asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto skipped over the failed mission to retrieve Sasuke, not wanting to tell them just yet about that still harmful memory. As Naruto told them about his life and the adventures he went on, Percy listened intently and agreed with the older teen on one thing, Naruto was an idiot when he was younger. Now, Percy had some self-esteem and didn't want to think he was as bad as Naruto was making him out to be, but he did admit the similarities were scarily similar. So, does that mean Percy can be like Naruto when he grows up? Piper asked teasingly. Annabeth smirked, well, if he applied himself a bit, I'm sure he can be as cool as Naruto. I am plenty cool. Percy pointed out. Of course you are dear, the wise girl cheekily retorted. Percy also swore that he heard the daughter of Zeus growl whenever Naruto would describe another girl he met on his travels. Everyone snickered at Talia who was once again groaning. This was going to be a reoccurring thing, wasn't it? Such as the actress turned Daimyo Koyuki Kazuhana, who from the description Naruto gave sounded very pretty and even gave him a kiss despite the fact she was a good seven years older than the blonde. Clearly the arts in him just makes the movie girls flock to him, Apollo boasted wildly. Or when he talked about a mission to a land of vegetables with a younger daimyo asking him to stay on as a personal bodyguard. Very personal I bet, Aphrodite giggled shamelessly. The son of Poseidon could see how Apollo thought Naruto was the same as before, how did one miss girls like that crushing on him? It was right there in his face, but he was too blind to see it. For some reason, Percy felt like he insulted himself. Because you are, Annabeth murmured with a pout. She swore her boyfriend was an idiot at times. After he summed up his training with Jiraiya, Naruto looked at the sky with a smile, and that, marks the end of story time. What, but what about when you came back? Grover asked, his eyes wide and yearning for the story to come full circle. Another time, Grover, Naruto said as he stood and stretched, come on, let's go. We've got three days to get to California and unless you guys can summon a dune buggy, we've got quite the hike. Well, that was an informative chapter, Apollo said with a sigh before whining, now I want to know what happened after he got back from his training. At your age, how many times must I tell you? Honestly, Artemis chided her twin. I'd rather like to know about his more recent history, Annabeth admitted before looking at the book, Lord Apollo, may I? No. Percy scolded her, getting a pout. Yeah, it's Percy's turn again. Apollo cheered. Yeah, nodded Poseidon's son before it clicked. Wait, what? Zero Frank stumbled upon the weirdest thing in the history of demigod kind. After winning the dart completion and getting the $500 prize. He made his way to Kansas, plain old Kansas. It wasn't that plain or old. Frank struggled as he was strapped down to an examination table and glared at the man, animal, thing, that put him there. Mawahahaha. A squeaky voice cackled, did you really think I could be defeated so easily Special Agent Jack Brower? The gerbil, yes, a talking walking gerbil with a monocle asked. For a minute there, yeah, I did. Frank said with narrowed eyes, and my name is Frank. He hissed. Silence. The gerbil squeaked and backhanded the Roman. Ow, what the hell are you? Frank asked. I have long foregone my given name, but I am, that gerbil with the monocle. Son of Pan, Mawahahaha. The monocle cackled. So, just the monocle? Frank asked, before getting backhanded once more. Ow, stop that. And how the hell are you a son of Pan, or Faunus? That is Pan, Roman hamster droppings. 
And let's just say the gods did some fucked up shit okay. The monocle asked with a deadpan before he explained, since Gia had opened the doors of death, I can breath life once more. He then hissed at Frank, it seems that the gods had figured out my power base Austin powers, so I will have to eliminate you, he cackled once more with his pinky in his mouth. Frank narrowed his eyes and growled, my name is Frank. Percy picked up the book after he rotated his shoulders a bit. It's a book, Percy. No need to stretch for combat, Annabeth giggled. You never know, her boyfriend said cautiously before he began to read. The group made their way through the junkyard of the gods in record time, all the while picking up random objects before putting them back down. Naruto had found a failed attempt to create an electric guitar that resembled his father's lyre. Phoebe had picked up a hair clip that transformed into a majestic bow that resembled Artemis, but it was Talia who found the strangest, and yet most interesting, item. Is this a plushy lightning bolt? Talia asked as she held the small fuzzy toy up. Don't tell me my dad had hefaced us make this. I would ask for no such thing. Zeus said in a fit. His son driving son just laughed at him for it, it sounded funny. Naruto laughed as he saw it and took it from her hands. He squeezed the toy and got a thunder sound effect, which got more laughter from the blonde before he replied, nope. This was my gift to him in order to cheer him up when he lost his boom stick. The gods broke out into laughs at that as Zeus looked red in the face, his stormy eyes crackling. Percy stifled a laugh before he asked the question on everyone's mind, oh man. Dot how did you survive that? Yes, how? Zeus asked with a pout. I got him a limited edition of Thor signed by Jack Kirby, Naruto replied with a smirk. That piqued Zeus' interest. At their confused looks, Naruto elaborated, Rai Gigi. Lord Poseidon and Lord Hades have their own favorite heroes of the comic book world. Rai Gigi liked the Norse prospect of a heroic god of thunder, where he was inspired to teach my dad a lesson. Copyright old man, copyright, Apollo snickered. Bah, it did little good anyway, the lightning god said with a frown. The squid god likes Namor the Submariner, seeing as he does more than Aquaman ever could. Squid god, Poseidon sputtered, Athena snickered. Yes, I think this boy has nailed a perfect name for you. Never heard of Namor though, Percy stated. His father pouted at him and said, you should read it. And Lord Hades is fond of Deadpool, a hero who can never die that is also insane. Ah Wade Wilson, how you make me chuckle, Hades whimsically said with a smile. Nico snickered at his father's hero crush. Are you saying that my father is a nerd? Talia and Percy asked at the same time with wide eyes. Reading enthusiasts, Zeus and Poseidon corrected at the same time. Naruto rolled his own. Well, no. They've been around for millennia, of course they need something to do aside from having kids all the time. Hell, all of the gods have a favored superhero. Mortals do some good work on fiction, Athena agreed with a nod. Uncle Ares likes Wolverine for his many fights, damn right. Ares cheered. Lady Athena likes Batman because he's a thinker rather than a powerhouse. Athena smiled at that, she wished the man was real though, wondering what kind of child she would have with him. Uncle Herm likes the Flash because of his wit and speed and the Golden Age version was modeled after him. That was the best one, Hermes pointed out sternly. Aphrodite has a thing for Spider-Man believe it or not, probably for the drama that occurs over the long years of his teenage life. So many girlfriends, Aphrodite said with a happy sigh. Hephaestus likes Iron Man, which is kind of obvious since Tony Stark is a frigging genius when it comes to inventions. The Forge God nodded, Mr. D likes Superman, and I don't know why to be honest. And you will never know, the God of Madness stated with a curt nod. Hell, even Lady Hera has a favorite hero in DC's Wonder Woman. Hera's cheeks turned a bit pink at that since one of her hidden hobbies were stated. What about your dad, or Artemis? Percy asked. Zoe and Phoebe looked at the ground with a sigh while Naruto grinned widely. Seems the hunters know something. Annabeth smiled. Believe it or not, they have the same favorite heroes. Hawkeye and Green Arrow, the blonde said before pulling one of his own arrows out. The archer twins grinned at each other, it was true. Though they argue over who is better. Auntie Arte thinks it's Hawkeye because of his skill with the bow, 
and most recently because of Hawkeye too who is a young girl. Talia snickered, she saw her lady's collection once or twice. While dad favors Green Arrow for his trick arrows like this one. And who wouldn't love those things? Apollo asked rhetorically. Naruto ran his finger along the pole of the arrow and the head suddenly opened from the triangular arrowhead into a grappling hook, I'm torn between the two. On one hand, Green Arrow has way more fun, but Hawkeye is more prone to put the bad guy down with one shot. Honestly, dragging a child into your arguments. Hera frowned at the two. Artemis turned away while Apollo just smiled. He would so do that. This is going to sound stupid, but are you a vigilante? Grover asked. The group looked at him and he held his hands up. I'm just asking because there was a lot of reports from California-based satyrs about a mysterious archer taking down crime in San Francisco a few years ago. My kid is a superhero. Woo. Apollo cheered. Seriously, what does this guy not do? Percy asked with a frown. Jealous much. Talia snickered. Oh go ogle your boyfriend. The son of Poseidon retorted. Whoa that's bizarre. Naruto commented as he put the arrow away, but that's stupid. Superheroes are just myths for modern audiences. Or are they? Leo asked in a mysterious tone. You're avoiding the question. Talia noticed with narrowed eyes before walking towards the blonde and poking him in the chest with each word, R. U. A. Vigilante. She is getting very aggressive. I think he should just kiss her again, Piper said with a snicker. Talia grumbled a bit. Me. P.S.H. No, Naruto denied with a grin, I'm just a humble demigod serving his family. A child of Apollo, humble, Hermes questioned jokingly. Humble my ass, Talia grumbled before Naruto vanished and reappeared behind her. The blonde wrapped his arms around her from behind and pulled her so her back was against his chest. He leaned forward to the point that his breath was heating her neck and making her blush. Aphrodite squealed once more as the others snickered at Talia. Quietly so the others didn't hear him, Naruto whispered in her ear, and what an ass it is. Nico Wolf whistled with his fingers. The blonde grunted as the blushing daughter of Zeus elbowed him in the gut. Pervert, she growled as she faced him. Oh you know you liked it, Annabeth said with an eye roll. Quiet you. Zoe and Phoebe looked disgusted while Grover and Percy were smiling in amusement. Percy was glad that the blonde was shifting his teasing over to the dark-haired girl and that he wasn't as often being insulted by either one of them. For now, Talia pointed out with a grin, for now. You know you love it, teased Naruto as he rubbed his stomach before he resumed walking towards the exit, come on guys, we're almost there. See, Naruto agrees with me, Annabeth said with her chin in the air. The crackling of static made her stop teasing the hunter. The group quickly followed him and was elated to finally reach the end of the massive junkyard without issue. Naruto groaned as he looked out over the desert and brushed his hand over the pouch that in which was the scroll that contained his father's latest gift to him. He debated whether or not he wanted to drive his new car in the desert and save them all a walk. Yeah, don't ruin that paint job, kiddo, the sun god pointed out. What if they need it? Leo asked. He didn't want to ruin the sleek ride in the desert, but sometimes you have to make sacrifices. No worries, it should pop up soon, Talia said knowingly. Fortunately, the fates were on his side when Grover pointed out a nearby utility truck, look. There it is, Talia smiled. Naruto grinned and started to walk towards it, only for Zoe to grab his arm. Facing the hunter, he was slightly surprised by her stern gaze. Artemis lieutenant stuck a finger in his face and said, Thou art not driving. Don't let Zoe drive, please, Percy whimpered. My driving isn't that bad is it? Naruto asked her as well as the others. When Talia and Grover gave him deadpan looks he frowned and asked, What? You drive like a psychopath, Grover accused. Wow, go Grover. Nico blinked in surprise at the blunt answer from the fidgety satyr. I do not. Naruto retorted, aghast at the claim. You don't follow the speed limit, Talia stated as she began listing on her fingers, adding another as she continued, you don't merge safely. Or signal for that matter. Lay it on him, Talia snickered. You started a police chase, exclaimed the satyr as his arms flew above his head. And you caused a huge accident on the highway, 
finished the daughter of Zeus. Naruto's eye twitched. I'd like to see you two do better with your teacher being the god of the sun. May order grant mercy to those poor fools in his path, Demeter murmured aghast. The two promptly shut their mouths and their eyes widened. They exchanged a look and simultaneously said, that explains so much. Jinx you both owe me ramen. Naruto cried out and quickly followed up with a cackle whilst rubbing his hands together, yes, three free bowls of ramen. Life is so good right now. I don't owe you, thou anything. Talia and Zoe cried out together before glaring at each other for speaking at the same time. Percy snickered at the Zoe and Talia moments, they were great. Naruto just added to the funny. Percy looked at the satyr in confusion before asking, was Naruto's driving really that bad? Grover shivered and nodded, trust me, I don't think I'll ever meet a more reckless driver. Don't doubt that G-man, Percy said as he shook his head in disagreement. All right, fine, Naruto relented with a pout as he crossed his arms. It was at that moment the two hunters were reminded of his father during the brief interactions that the god would have with his sister. That, is terrifying, the two hunters thought as a ghostly image of Apollo appeared next to Naruto. Oh us, you even pout the same, Artemis groaned to Leah, on the other hand, was reminded of the kawaii no jutsu. Then, in a brief moment that she claims was lunacy whereas someone like Aphrodite would call it a hopeful daydream. She imagined the child version of Naruto with black hair, lighter skin and the same eyes as the blonde before her. Talia snapped her head to the screen at the image and paled rapidly. My Talia, a future plan to wedlock him hum. The goddess of love asked slyly. Make it stop, the hunter whimpered pitifully. I hope it never does, Percy snickered with glee. Talk about payback. I would like a nephew or niece, Jason mused in a jokingly. Jason. Talia's face flushed bright red and she banished the thought from the front of her mind. Percy and Grover snickered at Naruto's defeated look, only to get glared at from said teen. The younger duo quickly stifled their amusement at the glare, both feeling chills go down their spine. Someone's cruising for a bruising, Nico mocked. As amusing as this is, shouldn't we get a move on? Inquired QB from Naruto's wrist. The former Biju was well aware of what was going on outside and could imagine the blonde's pout, knowing how his former tenant felt thanks to their empathic link. Q was right, Naruto sighed as he ran a hand through his hair to rid himself of disappointment, all right, everyone in the truck, let's go. Percy and Talia began to pray for their others. And you think I'm a bad driver? Naruto asked nearly five minutes later while clinging to the dashboard. Apparently, Zoe had learned how to drive in the midst of World War II when she and the other hunters were escorting children who missed the train or couldn't afford tickets out of London to the countryside. She learned evasive action the hard way, and as such, it was the only way she knew how to drive. Artemis laughed fondly at that memory as Talia shivered along with Percy. The group all but demanded she pull over when they approached the river. Even Phoebe agreed with them that Naruto was more responsible behind the wheel than her lieutenant. Agreed, Talia nodded, you tell her Phoebe. Considering that Zoe went off-road by a large cliff just to pass the few cars that were on the road rather than going into the other lane, the claim was hardly unjust. While the dark-haired lieutenant scowled at being deemed a worse driver than the blonde maniac with his father's driving tendencies. That has to burn deep, Hermes hissed in amusement. Naruto looked at the river in front of them with a frown. Percy, who noticed this, walked up next to the older demigod and asked, what's wrong? Well, the fact that you noticed first is terrifying, Naruto joked. That's strike three, it's the end of the world. Nico cried out dramatically, Leo jumped behind the coach to play along. Percy's face turned red, stop that. Seriously Nico, not funny. Yes it is, getting a roll of the eyes from the raven-haired teen. Continuing Naruto added, there's no way to cross this river. Well, there's some canoes over there, Percy pointed out to the beached modes of transportation. Naruto immediately scowled. Is that our only option? The blonde asked. Yeah, so, Percy questioned with a furrowed brow. I don't do boats, Naruto replied with hesitation before looking to the side in embarrassment. I. Dot get seasick. Wait, this badass, who can do so much, gets seasick. Hazel asked in disbelief. 
Seriously? This was asked in disbelief by the son of Poseidon. Yeah, seriously, you got a problem with that? Naruto asked with a glare. Touchy. Apollo smirked. Wisely enough, the son of Poseidon backed off, leaving Naruto to shift his gaze to the water. He was then hit with an epiphany and palmed himself in the face, duh. Water walking. Water what? Percy asked, seeing as he was still closest to the team. Naruto grinned. Just watch and be jealous, the blonde replied as he interlaced his fingers and cracked them before taking a few steps back and getting a running start. With a leap he cleared a good 15 feet, before he started skidding on the water like it was land. From the shoreline, Percy gaped as Naruto straightened himself out and brushed his jacket's shoulders off. While standing on the surface of the river, I feel the need to make a Jesus joke, Leo said, but out of respect for what silly mortals believe in, I won't. That's very mature of you Leo, said a nodding Hazel in approval. Gee guys, you've gotta come see this. Percy called to the group behind him, unable to look away from what most would claim to be impossible. The hunter's gazes followed his own and equally surprised looks appeared on their faces. Talia and Grover were in the same state as Percy, with their jaws touching the ground. Th that shouldn't be possible, Grover said with awe. Percy, can you do that? Talia asked while still staring at the blonde that was stretching while standing on the surface of water. Don't think so, Percy replied before rubbing his eyes, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Actually I can, you just haven't figured that out yet, Percy pointed out. Oh come on, Naruto called from where he was, stretching his legs, you guys have it easy, nice seating a few rowing exercises, but otherwise pretty relaxing. I still have to walk. Still cool though, Annabeth mused. The group continued to stare, making Naruto roll his eyes. He opened his mouth to call out to them again when a hand grabbed his leg. Looking down Naruto found himself staring at a pretty girl with raven hair and eyes much like Percy's. The girl looked to be around his age, but from the gleam in her eye he could tell she was much, much older. From what he could see, her modesty wasn't covered by anything but the water in her hair. Oh boy, Nyad, Hermes said with a headshake and a grimace. Well, hello there, Naruto greeted with a smile as he kept his gaze above her neck. That's a good idea nephew, Artemis nodded, at least he respected a nature spirit enough not to ogle her. Name's Naruto Uzumaki, son of Apollo. What's yours? Akantha, the girl replied softly her voice similar to the soft waves that flowed beneath his feet as she released his leg, how are you doing that? What? Standing on the water, Naruto asked with an arched brow. Akantha nodded. Naruto grinned and took a step back before crouching to be more at her level. Tapping on the side of his nose, Naruto winked, that'd be telling. The girl flushed slightly while Naruto chuckled and looked over at the beach to see the others getting in their canoes. Oh ho, snaring another one huh? Aphrodite grinned. Talia huffed a bit and crossed her arms. He then saw Percy speak with a girl who looked similar to Akantha, making him look back at the girl who had grabbed his foot. It's been fun Akantha, but I should get going, Naruto said. Before he could stand, Akantha grabbed his wrist and spoke, I shall be your escort, as my sisters are for the others. Careful kid, Hermes warned warily. Naruto tilted his head in slight confusion before grinning. If you insist, what would I be if I tried to stop a pretty girl from doing so? Akantha grinned right back with the faintest of blushes on her cheeks, a foolish man, is what? Lucky for me, you're not a foolish man, and you're not too bad to look at, either. Other Talia better be careful. Piper sung out, she wasn't really into this like her siblings, but this was comedy gold to the young demigoddess. Oh ho, ho, the naiad has some flirts in her. Naruto replied with a grin that earned him a melodious giggle, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship, Akantha. I think she wants a little more than that, nephew, Athena stated dryly. The two made their way to the now speeding canoes, Naruto running while the river nymph swam alongside him, occasionally reaching for his ankles in an effort to pull him under. In the blonde's eyes it was a harmless game that he enjoyed, not knowing that some of the myths for the naiads had been confused with sirens. Many a naiad had found a male intriguing and were very possessive of them. Case in point, Hermaphroditus. 
Hermes groaned. Oh come now Hermes, it isn't that bad, Aphrodite dismissed with a wave of her hand. I just feel so sorry for him, or did he decided on being a her, the messenger god said. Upon their reunion with the group, Talia glared at them. She did sit to the naiad for chatting and flirting with the blonde teen, and her glare at Naruto was for letting the nymph flirt with him. You have to be in a relationship first to be mad at him, Talia. You can't stop every girl from talking to him, Annabeth pointed out with a smile. Talia just gave her a dry glare, saying, yes I can. Again, the son of Apollo simply found it all to be in good fun, not knowing that he had unwillingly gained the attention of Akantha, in a romantic sense. Bad day for you young man, said Poseidon as he shook his head, those girls could be so possessive. The more she flirted and spoke with the blonde, the more enthralled she became. A determined gleam started to shine in her eye, and the river nymph knew she had found, the one, her sisters spoke of. Aphrodite giggled as Talia looked put out. She wouldn't take him now, oh no. He was important to the quest at hand and she knew that, but after he saved Lady Artemis, and there was no doubt in Akantha's mind that he would, the nymph would strike. Charmed her without even trying. Yep, my kid is just that good, Apollo grinned proudly. He was swatted upside the head by his sister for encouraging it. Naruto laughed as Zoe was splashed by one of Akanta's sisters, resulting in the grumbling of the girl. As the group disembarked their canoes, Naruto crouched down once more to say goodbye to Akanta. Smiling at her, he spoke, Well, guess this is where we part ways. Thanks for the escort Akanta. The naiad smiled back as the heat went to her cheeks. With an impulsive idea, she pushed herself up and pecked the blonde on his whiskered cheek, making the demigod go wide-eyed before she drifted away towards her giggling sisters. Though she didn't say it, Akanta felt that her message was clear, we'll meet again. Do we have a list of the girls after him? Leo asked in wonder. There seemed to be a lot of them, Jason pointed out. I say we start a betting pool, Nico suggested. How about no, and I don't kill you idiots? Talia glowered. Or we could do that, Nico amended. Naruto rubbed his cheek with a small smile as he watched the naiads disappear under the water. He turned and jumped up to the cement base that the rest of the group had disembarked onto. Did you have fun with the naiad? Talia asked with a frown on her face. Grinning at the girl, Naruto approached her and leaned into her face. Don't tell me you're jealous, Dalia Chan. She so is, Annabeth said with a smirk. Wa no. I'm not Jay jealous, why would I be jealous? Shut up. Whiskers, the daughter of Zeus spluttered out as her cheeks heated up. Gods was he annoying sometimes. The term of the day would be, Sunere, Apollo said with a snicker. It's okay if you were, Talia Chan, Naruto said as he wrapped her up in a hug. He then whispered in her ear possessively, cause if I saw you flirting with another guy, I might have to kill him. My. He certainly knows what to say, Aphrodite breathed airily as she blushed. Talia blushed, too. Wow, Talia, you sure know how to pick them, Percy snickered out. The blush on her face darkened and she quickly pushed the blonde away. Ignoring his small laugh, she pushed aside the satisfaction at hearing his proclamation. Oh yeah, you like that, don't you? Piper mused with a giggle. Oh, I swear McLean, one day. There was nothing attractive about an admission to murder in the name of love. Only someone crazy about romance would find something like that attractive, let alone arousing. I know I would, Aphrodite shouted shamelessly. Meanwhile on Olympus Aphrodite sneezed and instinctually closed her mouth upon doing so. Considering her current activity, Air's scream echoed throughout the halls of Olympus and across the planet. Even down in Hephaestus' forge, the god of the forge looked up and smirked seeing as this wasn't the first time. That evening at the Olympian's throne room, Ares would be asked over and over again why he had a bag of ice in his crotch, despite having an inkling as to why Aphrodite was ignoring Ares' glares. It was only the god of the sun and the god of thieves who wouldn't stop snickering. The gods broke out into fits of chuckles and Ares looked red in embarrassment. Naruto's laughter died down before he looked up at the construct before him. He blinked before rubbing his eyes, it's not, there's no way we were this close to it. The Hoover Dam, Percy murmured, 
a concrete arch gravity dam that was built in 1930 and named after President Hoover. Almost 727 feet tall, Grover said as he looked up at the dam, from the base to the roadway crest. It weighs 6.6 .6 million tons, Talia chimed in, and it has over three quarter cubic yards of concrete in it. Let me guess, Naruto ventured as the two hunters sent the three a confused glance, Annabeth. Yeah, the three replied solemnly. Annabeth puffed out her chest proud for brainwasa teaching those of the greatness of architecture. That figures, the blonde demigod sighed, she said it was her favorites and I guess that hadn't changed since I've been gone. She must spout facts about it over and over again if you guys could remember that much. I wish she were here, Percy mumbled. That earned him a few knowing smirks, though he didn't realize it. Annabeth cooed at her boyfriend and kissed his cheek, getting the boy to smile. I miss her, Talia admitted. Naruto patted her on the shoulder and nodded in agreement. I still can't believe I won that bet against her, Grover chirped, only to be punched in the shoulder by Dalia, ow. What? Not in the mood, the girl said. Yeah Grover, stop ruining it, Annabeth scolded, it was her time for the story, even if it was minor. Naruto chuckled at their banter before gesturing for them to follow him. The blonde demigod led his merry group of six into the main hall when his stomach grumbled. Stumbling and holding his gut, the blonde groaned. I used too much chakra, I gotta get some food. At the mention of food, five other stomachs made noises, resulting in blushing faces from the other fiver quest takers. Zoe recovered first and cleared her throat, I believe there is some food at the damn cafe. The three members of Camp Half-Blood and the Blonde Guardian all gained gleams in their eyes. Percy spoke up first, yeah, I want a damn pizza. Maybe we should stop by the damn gift shop and get Annie something. Naruto mused with a grin. Like a damn t-shirt? Talia asked with a smile of her own. Maybe a damn towel? Grover snickered out. Oh, beat that joke with a club kids. Apollo chuckled out. Nah, I was thinking more along the lines of a damn jacket, Naruto said with a smirk crossing his face. Or maybe a damn hat, Percy joked as he fingered the Yankees hat. Annabeth glared at Percy for that one, who held his hands up in surrender. Naruto laughed at that, Zoe looked at the four with confusion riddled on her face and Phoebe had her eyes narrowed as though thinking. Just as the taller hunter realized the joke, Zoe asked, what art thou talking about? Just go to the damn cafe and get some damn food. The four teens burst into laughter while Zoe looked even more confused. Taking pity on her lieutenant, Phoebe leaned over and whispered in her ear. As it was explained to her, Zoe took note of the many civilians staring at her, or glaring at her in some parents' cases. The lieutenant of the hunters turned a bright cherry red and stormed away from the laughing teens, an amused Phoebe following her. A blushing and embarrassed Zoe, priceless. Talia said with a giggle. Ah, that was great, Naruto said as he regained some composure over himself, we should get going though and apologize to Zoe Chan, even if it was her own damn fault. The three members of Camp Half-Blood snickered in agreement. The group had chosen a table that would safely seat six and was located next to a nearby fountain. Naruto was worried about his charges and all the talk about Annabeth had made Percy's guilt take a new level. As it should, Annabeth glowered at other Percy. So, with the group hovered around the fountain and positive that the regular mortals couldn't see them, Naruto pulled out a drachma and flipped it into the falling water. Oh Iris! Goddess of the Rainbow, please accept my offering, Naruto said before looking down at the shimmering water, Annabeth Chase, Camp Half-Blood. The rainbow-colored water shimmered before Annabeth's visage came into view. Naruto winced, as did the other campers, at her appearance. There were bags under her eyes and her hair looked unkempt. Percy winced and started to pray for his other. Oh my gods, Annie are you okay? Naruto asked in concern. The girl immediately looked at him and tears welled up in her eyes. Naruto. My Yankee's hat. I can't. It's missing. Percy's gone. My mom. My hat. Were the fragmented sentences he could make out through her tears. Annabeth looked embarrassed at her radical reaction, but had to admit she would very well feel that way. Naruto immediately felt his heart clench at seeing his little sister in such a state. He knew how important that hat was to her, 
but he never fathomed such a reaction. He should have had Percy call beforehand in an effort to reassure her. Before he or anyone else knew it, he was in big brother mode and glared at Percy. The son of Poseidon paled as Naruto's eyes shifted from their normally passive blue to a raging blood red. The golden suns became more yellow and it looked as though something evil was glaring at him. Scare the shit out him. Annabeth. Percy sputtered in shock at her determined gleam. You have three seconds to make her stop, Naruto snarled. His right fist clenched hard enough for his knuckles to pop and his bracelet was gleaming bright red. Percy was frozen from the killing intent being sent his way, so Naruto decided to give him a little push. 1. Nearly throwing Grover out of his way, Percy appeared in Annabeth's line of sight, Naruto glaring daggers at him from the sidelines. Swallowing the lump in his throat, Percy stuttered out, H. Hey, Annabeth. Percy, where have you been? We've been looking everywhere for you. Have you seen my hat? Percy winced at the question and rubbed the back of his neck while still fingering the item out of sight, uh, about your hat. 2. Spit it out boy. Leo shouted out, I took your hat and I'm really, really sorry, but please stop crying I'll bring it right back and never do it again. Percy exclaimed quickly at Naruto's growl. There was silence from both sides, with Naruto still boring holes into the back of the raven-haired demigod's head. Said teen felt like he was back at square one with the older blonde, only now it was slowly going to square negative 50. Only Percy, Nico deadpan, and that made in itself made sense to those around the Ghost King. Why you took my hat? Annabeth asked, her eyes wide in disbelief. They suddenly narrowed and Percy felt his spine fall out of his back under the glare. There's that patented Athena glare, Poseidon mused, feeling sorry for his other son. You stupid, moronic how could you steal my hat? I'm going to skin you alive and offer you to my mother in hopes that she forgives me for losing a gift like that. You're so f king lucky that I'm not with you right now or I'd cut off your dck and shove it up your a. Better yet, I'm going to shave off that small protrusion from your crotch and send it to Lady Artemis from your home address, you a hole. Do not ever touch my stuff again, Perseus Jackson, and if you so much as scuff my hat all. Percy paled greatly as he read that part. The mouth on you, Annabeth, Leo chided the girl, for shame. While absently noticing that Iris apparently censored her calls, Percy became whiter and whiter as Annabeth proceeded to threaten him with bodily harm. Percy scooted away from Annabeth who was grinning evilly. Zoe and Phoebe were wide-eyed and impressed. The only time they had heard such a chewing out was when Apollo managed to seduce one of the hunters back in medieval times. Artemis looked cross, as she had remembered that time, and glared at her twin. Apollo chuckled guiltily. The god of the sun was sure to stay out of his sister's sight for a good few years, resulting in the Black Plague since his healing prayers weren't answered at night. Maybe Annabeth would be a good hunter if she could instill the same fear in a boy their mistress did. Artemis' eyes twinkled at Annabeth, clearly full of mirth. Annabeth snickered along with that. Grover and Talia were holding each other out of the fear Annabeth was instilling in them with her overly descriptive conversation. Neither realized it, being too caught up in the swearing, promised emasculation and threats on Percy's person. Grover was bawling and his knees were knocking together and Talia was just staring in horror as the image of her innocent little Annie was torn to shreds. Whatever did happen to her? Talia asked Annabeth. Who knows? Was the cheeky response. Naruto continued to glare at Percy, silently cheering Annabeth on. Of course he would, Percy said blandly. He'd faced worse threats when he had to work with Anko Midarashi and Morino Ibiki on a covert mission headed by Jiraiya during the training trip when he was 14. Damn if those two weren't meant to be partners. If they ever procreated the term, sadist, would be insufficient for their offspring. Mental Note do not introduce the sadistic T&I Anbu to Bianca and Nico's father, the blonde teen thought. Ha, huh, I probably already know them, the underworld god snickered. As Annabeth's rant came to a close, Naruto let up on his glare, his eyes returning to normal, as Percy nodded and then fell backwards in a faint. Too much for you Percy? Hazel asked playfully, Percy didn't even give her an answer. The blonde was glad he decided to pull the mist around them to hide their conversation when he did, otherwise they'd be the subject of many stares. 
Naruto. Annabeth's voice made the blonde move forward into her line of sight. He took in his now panting little sister with a soft smile. She was so adorable when she was angry. Percy finished with a growl. Annabeth blushed pink. Calm down kelp head, now go on. Talia ushered the boy with a grin. The daughter of Athena continued, the D'Angelo siblings are training right now, but I could go get them if you like. Nah, let him train, Naruto said with a smile. By the way, did you enjoy the gift? Immediately Annabeth's eyes went wide once more, but a smile crossed her face. She ducked her head down and came back up with the small saber-tooth kitten in her hands. Beaming a smile at him, Annabeth gratefully spoke, I love him. He's my little loyal Washington. If I didn't have him during all of this I'd probably be a wreck. All eyes went to Annabeth before Nico asked, that's you when you're not a wreck. Naruto laughed and listened as his fellow blonde went on to describe how the other campers were taking to the kittens. As he listened to Annabeth, the two conscious other campers were staring with wide eyes at the girl. Oh gods, that's not her being a wreck, Grover whispered. Talia swallowed before looking at Grover and narrowing her eyes. Grover, yeah, why are you hugging me? Because I love you, Dia, Annabeth teased, Vuov loves the Wea. You're pushing your luck. Talia warned. You have five seconds to let go. Done, Grover agreed out by jumping away with his hands up, sorry Talia. Taking a deep breath, Talia nodded and rubbed her forehead, it's fine, let's get the Mr. C foam here out of his coma. I like that one, Talia admitted. Nico shrugged, I dunno, seems kind of situational. Do you guys mind? Percy asked in annoyance. They looked at Percy who was in fact foaming at the mouth from his unconscious delusions, with a sigh. Things definitely were interesting on this quest, that's for sure. Understatement of the millennia, Aphrodite claimed as she grinned knowingly at Talia. Well, Percy said as he set his book down and drank some water, who wants to go next? Zero Frank was running down the hallway as a deep Japanese accented voice spoke to him. We must keep moving guile. The white G.I. wearing hamster dubbed Hamtaro said while standing on Frank's shoulder. He had snuck in with hopes of stopping the monocle's plan, but saw the Canadian demigod and rescued him, where is your partner Chun Li? I don't have a partner, and my name is Frank. Yes yes, anyway, as I was saying, I am the son of Faunus my Roman brother. As I saw the doors of death open, I knew the monocle would run for them, so I followed. We have been fighting the hamster gerbil war for years until we killed each other. We must win Jason Bourne, we must. He declared, if I know Monocle like I think I do, we must stop his plot of a gerbil-centric world. Right, the shapeshifter nodded, but my name is Frank, chapter end.